Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I love it when my expectations are shattered. And that happened before I even heard the band today. Many of you have been recommending this band called Danzig, or rather, Danzig, because it turns out they're American, not some city in Germany. And I thought that they were rather new, but they've actually been around for quite some time. However, this is going to be my very first time ever hearing them. So let's get to it. Okay, very, very first impression is that his voice is almost jazzy. There's a smoothness in it and an airiness in it and a little bluesiness to it as well. Um, I just, again, shattered expectations because I was thinking this is just going to be major metal and I'm getting all of these jazz elements. That's so strange. Okay, back to the beginning. I mean, the instruments feel very rock. Right? It's kind of smoky. Super bluesy. There we go. <laughs> okay, the way that he steps that up and leveled it up each time was super cool. I also love the way that it started off so smooth and it was kind of silky. It was very enticing, right? It felt like I was being drawn into a spell, a little ensorcelled. And then you get some of that grit and then it, it just feels like it starts to take off. Like you're, you're going down some sort of great rabbit hole and it's going to be a wild ride. I'm going to go back because there were some specific things in the way that the style sort of shifted as I got going that I want to point out. Mother, tell your children not to walk my way. Okay, really notice the way he's letting go of notes here. There's a nice, uh, a little hush in his sound, essentially. Like you can hear it's just uh, got a little pool of breath around all of the phonation that he's making. And it's definitely got an easiness going on, no distortion. Tell your children not to walk my way. Tell your children not to hear my words. What they mean. I, it almost has like an Elvis like vibrato there too. That was really interesting. There's definitely a lot of relaxation around the entire vocal tract for this initial sound. And here he's essentially like mixing. It's almost like um, sometimes people talk about mix as a register. A lot of times I like to talk about it as just sort of mixing two different elements of a voice or maybe even two different physiological pieces in your throat that you're kind of putting together in a different way. And here it sounds like he's adding maybe like there's a, there's a rattle that's happening essentially. Uh, not exactly sure where that's happening. It sounds like it's an upper throat constriction. So probably like around their retinoids. But anyhow, the point is that there's a rattle and that's getting mixed into the sound. And in order for that to happen, there is going to be a little bit, just a tiny bit of constriction that happens. It's higher. That doesn't mean his whole throat is squeezing, right? It's not going to be over constricted. It's more like a little isolation. And then he's putting that together with this sort of open sound as well. Oh, oh, oh. 
you can hear it in the way he releases. Uh -oh. right. Can you keep them in the dark for a while? Can you have them from the wedding world? Oh, mama. I like that cry. So listen to the way he holds onto that and continues to funnel some distortion through that top note there. It's got a lot more energy behind it, obviously a lot more distortion on top, but he's giving more energy into the way he holds out that first note. Here. So you'll notice that the way he is cutting off the notes in that last verse, there's one time, I'd say the second phrase, I think, where he cuts it off just a little bit more lightly like he did in the first two. But then the other ones, he's just continued to drive a lot more energy through to the end of his phrase and keep that distortion really going. Okay, uh, last time on that and then we'll keep going. I love that big drop that happened in the middle. That was super awesome. Uh, I wasn't expecting it this early in the song, and so it was extra delightful. I do often expect for there to be some clearing of sound at some point during a song, but usually a little bit later when I've gotten really used to the sound. So this early one I was like, oh, oh, I'd already gotten used to that sound already. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that that happened. Um, I'm gonna go back one more time. Listen to the way he is so unspecific with all of the pitch in between. Like he'll, he tells us exactly where those pitches are, but then he's so swoopy in between them the whole time. I love the way you can just immediately tell when he's really launching a lot more energy into the sound and it doesn't necessarily sound like that energy is coming from here. It sounds like the energy is coming from his center and sounds like he's powered up with a really, really low breath and then is connected to that low breath to create something that's just hooked up. I, I like it because you hear that connection into the distortion as well. It doesn't feel like it's something it doesn't feel like it's a grating sound on his voice. It's a very powerful sound and it feels like it's kind of a primal sound, but not an ouch kind of sound. Let's go back one more time. Oh man, this is, this is catchy. Right, so many slides in there. Also, that's really interesting phrasing, the way it almost feels like it's cut off just a little bit early before going into what I think is the second verse. Huh, that's cool. Here. 
he also, he's playing with these phrases in a lot of different ways. Sometimes, like right there, he swung it up. There are other times when he's kind of toned it down. There are times when he holds it out and then gradually slides down. He's, I bet he does have a background in more bluesy singing. It just, there's something about it that tells me he's a seasoned singer that has found a lot of different ways to give flourishes um, a lot of variety. I love the way the, a lot of these pitch choices feel like they're going for a pitch that wants to reach higher, but instead he's purposely just like hanging lower on it, really just driving it home in sort of a gnarly, gnarly way. And as this song has progressed, it's impressive to me how I feel like he's got more and more power. It, it feels like there's so much subtext underneath what he's saying. I don't know exactly what the subtext is. I looked at the lyrics ahead of time and thought, okay, well, obviously I, I think he's making some sort of statement about people being overprotective of kids. But at the same time, it, it sounds like maybe it's encouraging somebody to come over to the dark side. Uh, you guys can let me know what you think about these lyrics in the premiere chat or maybe just down in those comments below. <laughs> Very confrontational. So like that that pitch in particular wants to resolve up, but instead he slides down at the end. Do you wanna bang head with me? Do you wanna be everything? <laughs> caught me by surprise again. I guess this is just like the way that the chorus is written. But wow, I just didn't expect that one more time. really interesting that that chorus isn't sitting in a really wide range but he's like really just giving it so much style as he's going through you've got both the style and the way that he's um, hitting different pitches and sliding between them also there's like a, a certain groove that he's got going on at the same time again reminds me of a jazzy blues kind of background um, but then in addition to that you have a very relaxed kind of diction paired with a very aggressive kind of singing that sometimes lightens up. It's got a lot of different elements that are all being pulled together to make this very unique style that is contained within a rather small range, yet it's still really impressive, right? You don't need to have a huge, huge range to be a very impressive singer. I'm going to go back again. The shortest, happiest guitar solo in the world. I love that. <laughs> okay, so immediately on this guitar solo, I like the way it just takes off. It's like, vroom, we're gonna go. And that was fun. Really grabbed my attention. And then it's super rangy. It's, I feel like, trying to be the antithesis of what he's been doing to bring a lot of contrast into the song. So 
So his his voice and style also has a like a laid back feel while at the same time having some aggression in it. But that laid back feel is part of that bluesy, jazzy feeling. Whereas the guitar solo just attacked it and was like full steam ahead immediately and basically said, how high can I go in this tiny, tiny segment? Very, very interesting contrast. <laughs> I feel like this song just got way better. I liked it a lot already. And then this part feels like we're just devolving into some sort of wild, wild race. It's uh, terribly fun. <laughs> Oh, thanks. He's so hooked in. Okay, so I'm using this word hooked in a bunch and a lot of you are probably wondering what that means. When you sing, there's... There's essentially breath pressure that is coming up from down below and your vocal folds close. They go wacka, wacka, wacka. When you start to create a pitch, right? They vibrate 440 times per second if it's a concert day. Um, that closure there, it creates this sort of sense of breath pressure back and you get this support, this feeling that whatever is happening lower is affecting what's here. And it becomes a connection. So a lot of times people will talk about feeling hooked into their support. It'll be that they can really associate what it feels like is going on underneath their vocal folds with the sound that's coming out. So it's a sensation that they are attached to their breath support. So I keep saying hooked in because the sound of that he's making, it sounds like it's so well supported. It's got that primal kind of groan to it. Not something that it sounds like he's trying to just make here, but rather that he's making with his whole body. I'm gonna go back again. Here, let's go back to that moment. Even the way he leans back there. <laughs> It's a lot of hair flinging. Ooh. 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 It's high. Ooh, oh, I like that. Oh, I liked that that tail. That was awesome. Glenn Danzig. Definitely a surprising singer all around. The way that he went from this bluesy, jazzy sound to this primitive rock and roll holler at the end is impressive. And I love the way that all of the stuff in between was full of intricate, yet also aggressive styling. It's definitely a packed three and a half minutes of music from an American heavy metal band, not a German one. Oh my goodness. So many surprises in this song. If you want to see some more songs that I felt were very, very surprising, you can check out this playlist over here. And may you fall more in love with music every day.